Thank you, Tom. Thanks ever so much. And welcome along, everybody. Uh, I'm really, really excited to be working with you all today. And uh, um, I hope what we do over the next hour will be uh, firstly enjoyable and uh, secondly um, helpful and creative uh, for your own particular uh, creative artistic roots and journeys. Um, but first and foremost, I'd like to start with uh, what we're going to do first um, in terms of the activities. Um, the first exercise I'd like to introduce to you is about recording and considering your own selves and to spend a little bit of time uh, dwelling on your, your yourself, yourselves. And this will be a drawing activity where I'm going to ask you to draw uh, your hand. And the reason why I want you to focus on your hand is because it's the, ha the hand is something that perhaps we underestimate and we perhaps don't think enough of, uh, even though it's it's part of us. And the, the, the sense of touch is such an important sense, a sensation of feeling, touching. We use the hand to reach out to people. We use the hand to, to articulate ourselves in so many sophisticated ways. Uh, if you're perhaps feeling unwell, you might touch your, your tummy. Or if you, you rub your hand through your hair, if you're thinking, uh, you might also hold hands with somebody as a way of connecting physically, but also emotionally. So the hand is such a, a critical part of us that I want us to spend the next few minutes uh, considering the hand and, and its power. Uh, so this will start off with uh, a, just a very, very simple exercise uh, where I'd like you to get a piece of paper. And if I just put my, turn my screen around, hopefully you can see that okay. I'll double check with you, Tom, is that all right? Is that yeah, that's perfect. Perfect. That. Um, now, this we, this exercise is is so much about just spending some quiet time, thinking and observing and and tr and and tracking your 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 hand, the palm of your hand. So I would literally like you to hold your hand out and find a spot in the middle of, of your hand. Find a mark. In in my case, I've got a a very handy crease that forms a cross in the middle of my palm. And I'm going to use that as my starting point. And all I'd like you to do for 10 minutes is to make a drawing of your hand, your palm, but start from that middle point. Rather than drawing an outline of your hand, I simply want you to track the creases, the folds, the surface of your skin. And you can do this in a number of ways. You might like to keep it as a as a very straightforward line drawing. And when I mean a line drawing, it's just simply using your pencil on the surface of the paper and articulating what you see in lines. Or you might like to use some shading. So you might want to use, say, the, the side of your pencil and very, very softly articulate the definitions of your skin and your flesh and the very the gentle undulations of your surface of the surface of your palm think of it almost as a, a as a way of mapping imagine your palm is a landscape and start to draw the surface as if it's undulating and folding and creasing and, and i'm certainly artists over the, over the the ages have, have thought about the body and the, uh, as a, as a as a landscape uh, as a metaphor for landscape and, and we'll, I'll show you some examples a bit later. But all I'd like you to do is just to, to remove any other extraneous thoughts from your head and just focus on this incredible thing that you've got in front of you, this incredibly complicated, beautiful, complex piece of physiology in front of you um, and, and all the things it does. Now, you might want to crease your hand. You might want to hold grip or crease up the, the palm of your hand if you want to, to make it more interesting. And as you do that, you'll be able to see all the, the wonderful definitions of creases and folds and musculature and fleshiness, but you might want to open your palm out. But as an organ of, of sense, the, the hand is such a critical tool. It's the way we understand, one of the ways we understand the world around us. And it's one of the ways we communicate with each other. And and we can tell people a lot about ourselves. We can tell a lot 
of ourselves with our hands. So, so from now, just spend 10 minutes drawing as far as you can go. Don't feel you have to draw the entire hand, but you might want to draw some of it or a detail of it. But uh, I might just start tracking my, my own creases as we go. Uh, so we'll start from now. And while you, you get cracking, I'll, I'll be doing some drawing with you. And, and I will interrupt that with uh, some reading which I've selected, which is exactly about the power of the hand and what it can do, okay? Yes, while, while you're doing this as well, it would be really lovely to know a little bit about your background and a yes. little bit about the fine art course. At, at of course, Tom. Yes, well. of course. So yes. To start off with, can, can you tell us a little bit about you and your, your practice and a bit of your story? Yes, you yeah, know? yeah, of course. Um, uh, yeah, I'm basically, um, my background is, is in sculpture. So my main area of, of practice is is making 3D sculpture. I'm, well, my, hand, my hands, my literally my hands are, I haven't got the finesse of a painter and I really envy painters, but, um, but I'm much more attuned to material and stuff. So my background is, is, is sculpture. I make sculpture with, out of clay and plaster and, and other materials like that, very traditional materials, but I'm very interested in the, the, the power of touch. Um, and at Norwich University of the Arts, we, myself and my colleagues are all practitioners. So we all have our own distinctive practices, creative practices. And, and uh, I suppose it's, really, it's a good point actually, Tom, to, to say that one of, the, one of the things that we really encourage on the fine art course is, is what we call thinking through making. And we, we really encourage students to articulate themselves through touch, through making, through using materials uh, to, to propel the work along. Um, that's, that's, I suppose, our, our overriding philosophy. So we, we really believe in the power of the, the hand and the mind and the, the way that we can articulate the world around us through materials. And, uh, and so, you know, in a sense, this is, <laughs> this is very relevant to, uh, to our, our sort of philosophy, actually. Um, and, and, the, and to go back to my own, my own work, I'm, I'm very, very interested in, in touch and how, how touch is manifest in material because how, uh, how an artist might handle a piece of clay says so much about their, themselves, the, their, their bodies and their touch is written into the material. So I hope that, uh, does that summarize uh, myself and, and what we do? Um, that, that does give us a bit of a background to you. I've also popped your email address, not your email address, your website address ah, into okay, the yes. chat as well. So, so we can get a bit yes. more of a sense of, of what you make and, and your background. You'd all be very, you know, all of you are very welcome to to have a look at my work and uh, get in touch with them if you have any questions. I think it's really it's really important. I can't stress that enough that that uh, as a you know the privilege of being a, a, a lecturer uh, at Norwich University of Arts is 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 that I, I have the I have the the the, the ability of the the access to um, so many amazing thoughts and 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 ways of working that students bring to the course and it's it, it's profoundly stimulating for me it's so exciting to be working with such a range of different talents and abilities and and attitudes and 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 that that excites me that makes that that makes it so valid and so uh, enriching as, a, as as an artist myself um, because some of the questions that get raised are, are incredible. I, no day is the same. So I'll, I, I might go in tomorrow and meet, a, meet some students who raise very different questions from the next day. And, and my job is to sort of flex around a, a, every single student's needs and what they want and how they want to articulate themselves. And so that might be from helping them to cast something in bronze or to help them stretch a canvas or to encourage them to go out and draw the landscape by... By sort of cycling into the middle distance and uh, experiencing the 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 north, the north Sea coast, or it might be much more um, ephemeral and abstract than that. It might be uh, it might be much more esoteric. So so it's ain't no no day's the same, and and that's what makes it exciting. So something that I find quite interesting about this, we were having a, a chat as we were kind of developing this workshop. Yes, but actually. Yeah. Um, creativity making can can be quite stressful and, and drawing for yes. some people can be can be quite a stressful thing to do yes. but what, what make what makes a good drawing what what's important about this type of drawing 
Um, um, what makes a good drawing is not necessarily technical accomplishment, Tom. It's not photographic realism. Uh, it's not necessarily abstraction. It's not necessarily any technical sort of uh, a sort of archetypal technical um, facet that you necessarily uh, um, might learn. It, for me, it's about passion and love. It's about how much you uh, your passion is about what you do and how much you love what you do. And that what that means is it's not necessarily that you you like what you've done or you might it might not be something that uh, you find easy. But if you're passionate and driven um then a good drawing is a drawing that 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 has that invested in it because if for example you're trying to draw dancers in a ballet then you, it's it's impossible to draw to fix them in 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 space because they're moving so what kind of drawing might that be instead it might be a very difficult drawing to accomplish because you're trying to articulate movement in very complicated ways and there's no one way to do that um so so i that might be a hundreds, thousands of different kinds of drawings that are made to try and articulate that that dancer. Um, so, so it's not there's no there's no there's no one singular ultimate drawing that is the best kind of drawing that you can do. And and I, and I suppose it's important to 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 say that because I think a lot of students worry that what they're doing is not good enough, that the drawing they're making is not good, at, you know, not com comp competent, and that can lead to a lot of anxiety. And I understand that. And, and I'm very, very keen to encourage students to try and divest themselves of, of worrying about that because no one drawing is going to be the same. And everyone works in different ways, Tom. No, no, no one student, no student does the same as another student. And you all you you will all have your own very particular qualities and skills and abilities and styles. And so in that sense, I'm I'm not I'm not interested in a drawing that is necessarily photorealistic or I'm not interested in a drawing that is is um, uh, uh, sort of edgy or blurry or messy or painterly per se. What I'm interested in is your attitude towards that, your drive, your need to do it and your desire to do it, because drawing can be something that is misunderstood. I think drawing can sometimes be a chore, something that people feel they need to do to when at or they they have to do but they don't really know why they're doing it um i want drawing to be something that gets you somewhere so for example with this drawing that we're doing i want it to be about you you know you focusing on yourself and spending time with yourself and and attending to yourself rather than worrying about anything else around so so that's this is the function of this drawing but it'll be very different to the function of another kind of drawing if i'm say drawing somebody a, a portrait or something like that it's um it reminds me of um a, a quote from david hockney that i, I always like um where he, he said uh, the definition of a good drawing is something that that includes the head hands and heart um oh, love kind of compliments yeah <laughs> yeah yes. what you said about the love yeah yeah because I because um, i mean I, I you know i love making art and i love drawing and i love i love being in the studio but i don't always like it <laughs> i don't always it can be very difficult um but i know i'm driven to do it and I mean, if 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 I was to, if I was to, I mean, this is like a, a current sketchbook I've got, I've been working on, and um, and for those of you who might be interested, this is a these are drawings, of sketches for sculptures, but they're not necessarily all great drawings, and some of them are terrible, and but but they're they're helping me to get get somewhere, get an idea going for a piece of work. Um, so drawing drawing is you know I think it's a I think it's a miss. I think it's a misnomer, misconception that drawing or making art can sort of elevate your senses and take you to another, another plane or a, another, another emotional state all the time. I don't think that's necessarily real. I think art making is often very practical and very, um, very pragmatic, um, like like other activities. But something will happen. Something magical will happen within that sort of very ordinary activity of drawing and making. Um, and, but you have to have love and passion to do it um, because uh, it, because the love and the passion will get you through those times when what you make, what you think you make is terrible or you really don't like what you're doing, but you just have to keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. Thank you for that, Des. Um, we, we've come to, to around that 10 minute mark now. Um, Gosh, right. You might want to lend another couple of minutes 
Um, I think that would be good because I'm, I'm slowing up, Tom. I'm, I, I'm, sorry, it's my fault. It's my no, fault. No, 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 not at all, not at all. And I hope all of you out there are kind of enjoying this because what I'm seeing in my hand is this incredibly, I, th I thought what I had with these kind of, I thought there's some very obvious creases in my hand, but actually um, they've got some, there's some strange shapes up, up, appearing, which I hadn't really, some parallel lines and strange sort of forks in my lines. And I, I'm, I'm, they be, it's become it's I don't know it's turning into like a roadmap or something this is it I was going to say like if we didn't know that you were drawing your hand I would assume you were drawing a roadmap of a, of a city like a an organically grown city yeah with kind of thick lines and thin lines and and what I mean I, I, I mean this this is I mean it's useful to um to think of it in terms of a map Tom actually because you know we often talk about mapping as as tutors or artists how we map the world around us and 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 i think there's there's something that we use you know you might actually all of you out there might be familiar with this this idea of a mind map and and i i sort of this might sound a bit tacky but i sort of i'd like this to be a kind of mindfulness map a map of your own sort of self but a, but an opportunity to kind of tune out for 10 minutes and just to think of nothing other than the the structure of your palm of your hand um and to think of yourselves because I think it's really easy not to think of ourselves, isn't it? It's very easy to 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 get kind of you know use up our time. I don't know, using uh, looking up looking at stuff on our phones, or you know, uh, when actually we need to spend a bit of time to you know to to focus on on us. <laughs> this, this is quite interesting. When we were when we were putting this together, you you were saying like I, it's really important that we give a decent amount of time. There's so many workshops where we. We get people to do quick drawings, which is great and spontaneous and, yes. and makes for a gut reaction. But this one is is about meditation. It's yes. it's, a, it's about uh, enjoying the process and feeling it out rather than um, pushing yourself and just doing gut reactions. Yes. Yeah, com completely. And, uh, and, and, th and there's a place for all of that. There's a place for all of that. But actually spending time just just focusing on something. I mean, you know, this is this is a minuscule area of our bodies and yet uh, we perhaps don't spend enough time looking at this and scrutinizing it and uh, but hopefully it'll allow you all to think beyond this palm of your hand and just to to, to sort of just to sort of tune out a bit and just to, to focus on the the marks you're making and the the shape that's occurring and we've and what a I couple like, of sorry, hmm? sorry tom go on i was going to say we've had a couple of interesting responses that follow that as well okay. so um, all right so one person said, this exercise made me realise that I have quite a few creases on my palm that form letters, which is oh, wow. really interesting. That's really good. No, I like, I like that a lot. Um, I don't know, I'd be very keen to know what letters they are and if they spell something. But, uh, but, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it is true. it's true, yeah, yeah. Um, and, then, and then another reaction, I, I never thought my hand was this interesting. <laughs> Isn't it great? Just giving us well, a deliberate reason to look really intensely yeah yeah that's great to, that is really really lovely to hear um I, I um i think that's that's very profound actually um but you know it i suppose what i'd like you all to think about is is that you know you just because we've done this now doesn't mean to say you shouldn't continue doing this after we finish this workshop and you know if, look you know the the you know, try your other hand draw with your other hand draw with the hand that you don't your non-dominant hand and draw the opposite uh, and and uh, Tom, you also had a really good suggestion for turning the paper upside down or inverting it to look at the, you know, the 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 the, the, you know, the, the opposite kind of the opposite view of your hand. So there are lots of different ways we can observe ourselves, um, and uh, and certainly, you know, it doesn't have to stop now. So so I would I would urge you all to to to, to continue this because actually what might superficially look like a series of abstract lines um, to someone else, you know where this has come from. You know that this has come from you and it's come from observation. So observation has become abstraction, but, but importantly, um, I hope it's also quite relaxing and you're hopefully quite powerful in that, in that opportunity to, to just zoom in. We've, uh, we've had a lovely reaction, which is yes, I think I could do this forever. <laughs> well, that's a tremendous. Well, good. Well, I mean, obviously, <laughs> obviously you need to do other things, but uh, yeah. <laughs> but imagine, you know, imagine if you did spend, you know, even got a magnifying glass and spent 
hours just scrutinizing and drawing what you see here. They'd be incredible. There's another, I probably didn't articulate this well enough at the start, but the reason why I didn't want you all to outline your hand is because it becomes obviously a hand. And, and I, I wanted to kind of leave it sort of open that by just drawing the lines and the creases and the marks, um, it, it reveals other things. I mean, I've been working with plaster recently and it, and it dries my hands out. So the, the kind of the, the blister, the, the, the drying out that occurs has become like, they become like craters on my hand if I look closely. So, and, and you might, you know, I know I've got a, a scar on my hand as well, which is part of this drawing. So my history, my own, my own kind of history is written into my hand. And I'd like to think yours, you know, yours will too. You, your, your lives and your existence is written into this, this amazing, this amazing surface that you've got on, on the palm of your hand. Um, Desmond, we, we've had around 15 minutes on this now. Yes, we have. Um, we should wind it up now, shouldn't we? Would, would you, how would you like to do this? Would you like us to see some examples? Would you would like us to see what people have been up to? What are you, what are you feeling? I would love to, Tom. I'd love everyone to share their drawings on Padlet. I'll do the same, actually. Should we do that? Should we, should we have a... Let's, let's do that. Come on then, all right. Great. So at this stage, I'm about to share my screen, um, if I can. Um, and what I'm going to um, pop up on screen is our Padlet board for this workshop. Um, with this, um, I think Gavin, if it's all right, if you could pop in the address to to the the browser, that would be brilliant. But I'll also share it so people can scan the QR code and show us what you've been up to if you feel comfortable to. And um, we'd love to see what you've been drawing. I'll explain how that works in just a moment as soon as I get my screen shared with you. Great. So, guys, if you would like to, it would be wonderful to see what you've been up to. All you need to do is um, open up your camera app on your phone if you have a smartphone. Uh, there you can um, scan this QR code. All you need to do is just hold um, your camera app up against the screen. It'll automatically sc scan the QR code. From there, there's that little button in the bottom right of the screen, and that's where you can click on that to upload your images. You might want to just take a photograph of your, your drawing and share that with us. We'd love to see what you've been up to. Hey, Tom, hopefully okay. mine's come in now. Okay, I think um, we're, we're just waiting for the images to be approved. And we'll see what has been going on. So we might need to refresh our screens. Um, that's something I always forget to do. There we go. Excellent. Hello. Oh, God. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. I love this. I have a giant M on my palm, which I've always believed since I was a kid that it was the initial of my soulmate. Izzy Davidson, that's fascinating. That's absolutely fascinating. Um, a giant M, you know, I've got a big A and a big cross. I've got a, I've got a the center of my palm is an X, um, like a kiss or a cross. Well, some of these are just so thoughtful, so delicate. Yeah, they are, they are. And, and that's, that's really, that's what this is about, isn't it, Tom? This is about thin, thought you know something thoughtful something something kind of the delicacy is probably built into the fact that it we're, we're spending some quiet time doing this aren't we we're we're not rushing this beautiful drawings everyone gabriel gordon that's really wonderful i love the the thick lines and the, the, the more gentle lines um yeah really tremendous really interesting and uh, uh critty i think you're right this looks like a landscape yeah it does it that, that's why I thought you know, the topography, this sort of this idea of topographic map, um, the hand, the body as a landscape is is so profound. Um, you know, we, I mean, it's no accident that we 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 find, we gain we gain a huge amount of satisfaction and well being and pleasure and in going out into the landscape and walking and being part of it. And I think it works both ways. You know, we see the landscape in ourselves, perhaps, but the uh, the landscape is seen in us. Um, and I think we, I think it's, yeah, there's no, no, no accident there. I don't think. What, what I think is lovely about these images as well is that people that have been taking part in it have, have really 
concentrated really on those marks, those secondary marks, and not necessarily the silhouette of the hand. And I, I it's such a, it's so encouraging to see how people have embraced that challenge of, mm. of looking at those uh, yes. the creases and the folds yes. and yes. Th those little marks in the skin. Brilliant. Yeah, I totally agree. And, uh, uh, and, 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 you know, I, I think, I think this is, um, you know, we, we might, this activity or, or, ju or just scrutinizing ourselves and just spending this time, it, I, can, I, can, I can only feel that can only be a good thing, a positive thing. <clears throat> and, and it might be something that you do weekly, you know, you might, because uh, you, you, I think, you know, your hand will change on a weekly basis. Uh, that's tremendous. I love this. So that blue Byra drawing is good as well. And uh, whoever did that one, there's one just, just sort of below that. There's almost like a series of abstract marks, like kind of glyphs. Really fascinating. Yeah. Really, really good, everyone. Well done, everyone. I'm, I'm really very, very moved by this. This is tremendous. Uh, because the hand is such a, the hand in art, you know, art, you might have all done this at school. You might have drawn the hand, but have you really drawn the hand? And I think you're all now really drawing the hand. Um, what, what, what I love about this as well, when we're asked to draw a hand and we don't really think about it, we can often draw a bunch of bananas or sausages <laughs> by, <laughs> by mistake. But you can yeah. see the banaliness, the inconsistencies, the inaccuracies around, around the structure of the hands here as well that, that are very evident that we, we often overlook. We, we often uh, we look, but we don't really see. Um, yes, yes. We're really getting sense of really good observation skills here. Oh, really is good. I mean, um, in the, there's there's so many ways this could go, and 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 as as an activity that hopefully promotes kind of mindfulness. Um, you know, think think. I do really, and I do stress to tr try it. Uh, try it. You know, with your other hand, your non-dominant hand. Uh, try it. Try try drawing from touch. You know, in darkness. You know, just feel feel the creases on your hand and try and try and articulate them there are lots of ways you could try this i'm pleased to see that some of you thought it was relaxing that's that's important that was really wasn't it tom this is one of the things we were really keen to 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 encourage that this was an activity that was was relaxing and and healthy mm. tremendous um and i i, I um yeah, I'm very encouraged by these. Well done, everyone. Well done. Um, I'm, I'm kind of very intrigued by the lettering. Uh, someone else has just written that. So I'm very intrigued by the, kind of the letters that we might see in our hands or the marks. Because um, these, these creases are, you know, they're like fingerprints, your, your hands are totally unique. Are there still more coming in? There's, there's a few more. We might have to come back to these in a yeah. bit um because yeah. of time good. but wow what, what a wonderful <laughs> okay yeah yes well isn't that amazing um uh okay good right so <laughs> we better move on we better move on to the next our next our next um the, your next uh, task really everyone um ultimately this will still involve using padlet so we'd like you to do some more sharing but if you think about if you think about your own your own lives your own histories your own identities and yourselves um you've probably got a number of things that you've kept or you collect that you feel represent your your that, that represent significant parts or points in your life um and the things we have around us the ephemera or the objects and the artifacts or the the, the stuff that surrounds our lives um effectively is a kind of portrait i suppose um now there are things in you might have that you return to you look at you hold you handle you look at you listen to that help you to sort of help transport you back to another time that makes might make you feel uplifted or um that might you know when when sort of times are tough th these things might give you a much more positive sense of the world that might just make you feel better um and this exercise is, is an opportunity for you to collect and, and select things that you feel are important to you or significant to you that, that have those, those qualities, that are charged with those qualities. So what I'd like you to do 
is spend five minutes rooting around your house or wherever you are and to collect maybe between three to five, no more than five things, whatever those things might be. They don't have to be, well, they could be thing. It could be anything you like. But what I'd like you to do is to find up to five things that are important to you, have a memory, have a resonance. Um, and I'd like you to arrange them in a certain way. Um, that might be a sort of assemblage of these things. It might be a stack or a pile or a, a constellation of, of artifacts that sort of tell a story, that tell your story, that tell your, your story in a certain way. It might be a chronology. You might find things that represent certain points in your life or there might be things from the most, the most immediate last week or so, but it might be something that comes from your furthest childhood or your... Um, your, mo your most emotive uh, point in, in time and lay them out, take a photograph of them and share them on Padlet, please. But here's the twist. What I'd like you to do is to think of a word that you associate which eat with each of these objects. So um, it might be that you have uh, a word that, that resonates with something, but doesn't necessarily describe it. So I'd like you to think of a word that is, you can associate with that thing. And, uh, and, and share it, and then we'll, we'll have a look, and, and I'll do the same myself. And I think, Tom, you're going to do that too, aren't you? Well, now I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. But I'm going to do that too. So just please don't, um, don't feel uh, you have to force this, um, if, uh, but just, just sort of you know, have a root around, have a scratch around, and it might be something kind of, you know, it might be something quite low-key. It doesn't have to be serious it could be quite playful um and it might be it might evoke things that are kind of also very playful and fun and enjoyable um but think of things that might kind of have a have a real really kind of important part to play in your life that helps identify you all right so it is now 1108 so let's say we'll give you five minutes so uh 13 minutes past if you could then start uploading these these images of your clusters your constellations of objects and, and if you could post the words that you associate with them, uh, that'd be terrific. And they don't have to necessarily be in order either. Think of them as clusters, all right? And if anyone has any questions about that, do, do please just pop it into the chat. But do you have some examples for us, Des, as we... Oh, you want me to... Okay, <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. As we're running around yeah. doing our... Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, all right, yeah, fine. Um, yes, I do. Um, the first one, I mean, I've got a couple of things which I've collected. Um, uh, so if you, you might be able to see, yeah, if this kind of helps kind of prompt you. Um, all right, I hope you can see that. This, everyone, is a piece of driftwood. It's got absolutely no value whatsoever monetarily. It's a piece of wood that I found on a beach. And um, it, it's kind of, in a sense, worthless. But at the same time, it's invaluable. And that's what, what's important to me about this object. It's got paint on it. It's, it's covered in... Um, gooey paint. Um, I think it might have been a mixing stick that somebody used to sort of mix paint up. But I found it on a beach. And and what I what makes what excites me about this thing is I don't know where it came from. I don't know if it was a painter, an artist, or somebody who's just painting their boats, and it was discarded or dropped or uh, fell off a boat or something. But anyway, it washed up on the beach, and I found it. And and I, it makes I, I I find myself speculating. Well. You know, did that paint belong to a certain kind of boat? What kind of boat was it? Where did the boat go to? Um, was it a, a fishing boat? Was it a, uh, did it go across the Atlantic? Um, did this belong to somebody who, you know, what was their life like? What did they do? But then I found it and then, then I, it's came, it's come into my possession. So I think also about, I think about the, the way beaches throw things up that you don't expect. And, and, I, and I'm very pleased it came my way and I'm very pleased by chance, a completely chance encounter, this has come into my life. The next thing is, um, I don't know if you can see that. Is that the right way around? Yeah, I can hopefully can see that. That's a, that's a brush, a brush, a very old used brush, but it came from, if you can see that on the lettering, it says Slade, um, which is the Slade School of Fine Art, which is where I did my degree in my MA. And uh, um, this brush was in the studio that I worked in. I was there for six years. It, the most profound experience of my life going to university and studying fine art. And it changed everything for me. It changed the way I have relationships that it changed. I met the partner of my child. 
Um, I made terrible work. I made great work. I um, had disasters. I had successes. All those things happen in six years and in London. And, and I keep this as a memento of, of that time. Um, and all the, I love thinking about all the kind of, the, the, what, the, what kind of stuff this brush swept up. How many artworks or how many pieces of work or dust and stuff that came, fell off sculptures that I was, I was working on, other people were working on. Then lastly um, is a, um, a fossil. And this is a gastropod fossil called Yomphilus pentangularis. And it's a, a 365 million year old gastropod, which is basically a snail petrified in rock. Um, the reason why it's significant is because fossils blow my mind, but I found this uh, in the Burren in Ireland. And I, um, uh, I'm, I'm, that basically gastropods and ammonites are my favorite fossils. But I, for me, it makes me think about deep time in my, my own existence and my own kind of place in the world um, compared to this thing, which, which is now rock and uh, I just, I can't, it just blows my mind. These things blow, blow, these things blow my mind. But I found it on a particular time, in a particular point in my life, on a very bleak uh, mountain in Ireland and um, it sits with me and it's on my mantelpiece and I touch it and I think about when this thing was alive. So these, so I guess these three things are kind of all about time actually uh, in many ways. So they're my three objects. Um, yeah. Yonflus pentangularis, a brush, a piece of driftwood. Over to you. Very much. I, I think Des. Yes. We've got we've got a few that are starting to be posted. I've posted mine. Now you've now you've said that <laughs> uh, on the panel board. Okay. Um, but also, I, I wondered whether you wanted to share some of those examples. Um, yes, please. As well. What sh sharing some of the. Um... Yeah, from the PowerPoint that we um, we yeah, put that's together. a good point. It's a really good time to do that. I think um, let, let's let's start with um, the images of uh, yeah. Okay, so all, all of you, but this is this is something you know we're, we're asking you to sort of select and collect things. Now, artists have done this since art, art was ever made. You know, artists have always collected things. Um, but I show, I thought I'd show you an example of the work of Ham Steinbach, who who makes these sculptures which he doesn't really do a great deal to them other than represent these objects but they have a kind of so once they're associated with each other they they develop new meanings so um artists do this you know we we put things together and then we we create new narratives new meanings that that might have a, a greater potency than the actual things on their own this is a kind of a some cheap trinket with a like a sheriff's badge on it and then there's a a, a some sort of bin on it and uh, so the thing on the left is a cookie jar there's a bin in the middle garbage can and a wooden stacking toy for children now what those meanings are between them is is uncertain we don't really know what that what, what the connections are and it doesn't really matter what i love is that they're just such weird associations such kind of strange strange connections you could start reading things in into it but actually i think they're quite beautiful as they are so I guess what I'm saying is the reason why I'm showing you this is that your own associations will be particular to you and distinctive to you, and they won't be the same as anyone else's. And the next uh, slide, Tom, if you don't mind showing us the yes, Hamish Fulton um, piece is, I mean, th this stuff is kind of, um, yeah, very poetic. And um, I wanted to show you the work of Hamish Fulton because this is where we're asking you to, or I'm asking you to provide words that you associate with these things. And in a sense, Hamish Fulton does it the other way around. He, he makes things as words that are associated with things that you don't see. You just have to imagine them. So starlit waters, as you can see, is, is, a, is, is, is a, the word starlit waters. But notice how it's surrounded by netting, which you could associate with fishing nets. And then when you think about starlit waters, you might start thinking about fishing nets or fishing. And for me, the most the association I have is when I, I, a couple of years ago, I was flying, I flew to Seoul in Korea. And at nighttime, when we, I was approaching Seoul Airport, I could see all these lights out, out, off, off the coast of Korea in the, in the middle of the ocean. And there were fishing boats lit up, crab fishing. And I've never forgotten that. And I always think about this work. So my association is a very personal one from a very particular point in time, seeing something that I associate this work with, even though the artist didn't associate it, he probably, it was probably something altogether different. So 
there's real power everyone in 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 the way you think about your own selves and your own relationships to objects and so the the connections you make are will be distinctively yours and very personal to you and very important for that reason and then the last one and there's one more isn't there's a neon piece diamond studded fish net and again the he hamish fulton is obsessed with or was obsessed with the coast and water and uh, you know what this means is is open i mean a diamond studded fish net has implications of glamour maybe um you know jewelry uh fashion but it might also be much more pragmatic it might be the sort of a uh, fish net being pulled out of the water gl glimmering in the moonlight that looks like it's got it's diamond studded who knows and it doesn't really matter but again these associations are we we can we can apply our own associations to these things that are poetic and and I'm, i'd like to think you're doing that too because when we when we share this stuff on on Padlet, when you share your own clusters and your own words this will other we'll, we'll all look at them and we can have we can build our own kind of narratives to that thanks tom um Des, we've had some really interesting things let's see pop them. in already. Do you, want, do you want to have a little look? Yes, please. I'd love to see them, yeah. Um, right, let's bring this up. I say that as if I'm going to be able to do that like, instantly. <laughs> um, Teodora, of course you can put the object. You, you just said I don't have the objects, but that's fine. The pictures will be fine. Absolutely fine. If, it, if these, things, these things might not necessarily be things. They might be images or even sounds. Wow. <laughs> Gosh. Gosh, gosh, gosh. This is amazing. Um, comfort, familiarity, love, and where it begins. I mean, I've got to say, everyone, these, even these words are very poetic, aren't they? They're very resonant. Um, really amazing. Achievements, memories, inspiration. Um, <laughs> Grand's monkeys. Love it. I love it. Wow. What a mixture of emotions that mm. are communicating yeah. these. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. And, and, and they, they kind of, uh, you know, they, they're, they're mixed, a mixture between quite poignant things as well. Um, you know, food, mystery, lost anxiety to skateboard and freedom. And I think, I think we all, we all have these, don't we? We all, we all kind of oscillate between, you know, we all do oscillate between the good stuff and the positive stuff and the stuff that's harder to navigate. And, and it's really important that you you can articulate these and get them out. Um, <laughs> struggle, elation, calm. Wow. Comfort, creativity, immersion. It really feels to me, Tom, like looking at these, that you've all you've all got sort of very resonant objects you can go to that you have strong connections with. That uh, uh, you know, it's very very hard to not be connected to. Even the most down at heel things, the most ordinary things, have real power, don't they? Planner, old paintbrush, prayer mat. Yeah, I don't, and, and this is interesting as well, a gratitude journal, an anchor. The word anchor is interesting, I think. An anchor, this, the, 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 the person who's just posted up the, 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 the paint set and the, the, um, the anchor. I think that's a good word to use here in this sense, because I think these, um, these objects you could argue are kind of anchors into they can anchor you fix you to a, a point in time so maybe you know even though they're not literally an anchor these are kind of emotional anchors an emotional anchor that takes you to a person that you you're in love with or a, a, an important member of your family or um an experience that you've had that has been significant these are these are anchor points these are nodal points in your lives um very very interesting really interesting and it's, it's so important as creative practitioners that we understand other people's impressions and perspectives hmm. and relationships with these items, because that in turn will inform how we can make more powerful, more resonant, more appropriate work for whatever context, not just for fine art. Yes, and it's, it's important that, it, yeah, we don't just think of it as fine art, that, it, yes, it, the, these are these are kind of, these can be, these can be points of reference for anything, can't they? They could be a piece of writing that you do, creative writing, or a, um, it might be that you you use them to to take you into to make something else, like a an illustrated story or a um, 
even something architectural um because because you know for example these these trinkets you know there might be somewhere that you house them and you might have to hot you might place them in something you build a bespoke piece of furniture to store them like a, you mentioned the word shrine yesterday tom and and how these things these things might become objects of devotion or or contemplation even how fascinating it's fascinating yeah. to see into everyone's worlds as well it, it is yes yes yeah and, I, and I, I just want to thank you all for sharing this and being prepared to share because certainly as creatives we we you know a really important element of being a creative practitioner and an, and a student and a, an art student or a fine art or illustrator student is the ability to be able to share and to articulate your thoughts and to be prepared to, to put things on show and, and I, i'm really very encouraged by what you're all doing i think this is terrific I, I also like the arrangements you've made as well you've made them into these fascinating kind of compositions um really really fascinating arrangements of things uh, and doesn't it prove there's no such thing as an ordinary life or an ordinary home? You, you know, you're all extraordinary. All of you really are. Um, find back, find time to look back. Now, this is interesting. Whoever wrote, put this one up, I, this is a sort of magnifying glass and a what looks like a watch or a clock behind it. But there's a, it's a very kind of, it's a very poised. Yeah, thanks, Tom. You've got your arrow. It's a very poised sort of composition, which I, I you know, all of these could become paintings and drawings, but. Uh, but that one, you know, that I like the, the the objects make me think of the still life tradition of, and if any of you are familiar with this, the tradition of still life painting, artists through time have included objects um, that relate to one's existence. And in a sense, you're all making these, you're all making the same, you're all part of that tradition. You're making still life compositions, um, particularly the one that says comfort, growth, identity, learning, pride, with the skull and the boots and the guitar and the, the toys as well. Um, really, it's really quite good. Powerful, powerful the angle at which that one's been shot as well, which has been mm. shot from below going upwards. So it gives yeah. status to the, those objects. Yeah. And I, I really like how the when when we position the words alongside these these objects, it really acts as a, um, an avenue or a channel in which or a lens for us to to understand the, the compositions through. Mm. It, it really helps us to to get into the head of of the person who who put this work together or put these objects together and to, to understand their, their perspective a lot more and that's the power of titling with artwork um, it, it often acts as that that avenue that that way in for us to understand where the work is coming from and let the work tell the rest of the story yes and and actually you you've hit on something that that you know a, a lot of I, I encounter a lot of students who worry about how to talk about art which, which is something that I understand completely. It's really hard to talk about our creative practices. But what I say often is you don't have to, you don't have to describe what you've done. Words can actually be a foil. They can be, they can be associated with the work, but they don't have to be the, they're never gonna be the work, but they can assist the work or the reading of the work, but they could also act as kind of foils to the work. They could be suggestive or even quite abstracted, but they can have an association that, that's distant or near. But that becomes a kind of poetic, it becomes poetically charged. And um, and often when people sort of say, well, I don't, I don't know what to say about my work. Well, you've all said something very powerful about your work you're doing now by just selecting four or five words. That, that says a great deal. So Des, in terms of well-being, how does this relate back to our, our well-being and looking after ourselves? Yeah, it, it's a good question, Tom. I mean, th this for, for me, this, is about using you know for, for from a well-being perspective it's i think it's incredibly healthy to be able to to reach back into our own sort of pasts and our own lives and to reflect upon what we've done and what we think about what we achieve through these objects so these are these objects are things it's their stuff but actually the well-being is is a way of kind of fixing on spending time to think about ourselves through these objects i suppose does that make sense um yeah, to to the the memory, to the activity, yeah, 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 to yeah, the yeah. the centering on centering on the achievements. These things. Yeah, 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 because absolutely. because it might be that you know you, it might be a medal that you won in a in a race. Well, that just shows and that demonstrates that's a, that's an object that's an object that represents an achievement that you've made, and um, and no one can take that off you. But also, yeah. it might be that these keepsakes that you have help you to to rem, to rem, remember remember experiences that 
that kind of shape you all as individuals and very distinctive individuals. So they they have an, a critical part to play. So well well being is the, the the well being aspect to this is 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 sort of bound up in in reflection, in reflecting upon and thinking back and and dwelling on on things that that are significant in our lives. And I th and and it's really important to do that. I think it as a, as a creative person and just as a person not to not to, to be able to share these things and to 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 look and to spend time reminding ourselves of, of what we're all about thank you Vince. i hope that I hope that, I hope that i hope that articulates everyone i hope that kind of makes sense because um you know then, then you might put things away in a box after this and that's okay but make sure you take them out again and uh, um and share them and talk about them and uh, um you know like it's, it's the most obvious thing is is um you know, I, I, you know, love thumbing through your kind of your your images on your phone from things you've done, but but actually, what about the things that you've collected? Not just the images, but the things uh, you have in your lives. Um, and uh, and I think well-being is also about recollection, reconnecting, recollection, um, and you know, recalling experiences um, can be so up, you know uplifting and uh, enjoyable. Um, to dwell on things a bit like we know you've done this already so what you've done already today is you've focused very inwardly on your hands and you've focused very distinct you know you've had a focused amount of time on your own selves in with your hands now you've you've started to open these things up these things that maybe people have given you um these objects or these things that you've been part of that represent your lives then it's now sort of opening up to involve other relationships perhaps um and uh, which then kind of neatly brings us into the next thing but um I also think just the last thing about well-being that your question, Tom, is that I think well-being is also about recording, actually recording your thoughts through or your your thoughts through through this this activity by writing these words down. Uh, it can again sort of re, you know re reconnect with these objects in a, in a kind of poetic way. Absolutely, and some of you have started to like one of those images, which is is lovely mm -hmm. and affirming. So if you'd like to do that, oh. then then yeah, please do get involved. Um, Thank, thank you, Des. Um, Good. Activity number three. Number three, right, everybody. Now, what I'm, what I, I'm, this, this is already fascinating me. But um, wherever you are in the world, wherever you are right now in the world, in your wherever you're dwelling, if you're in a house, in your home, in someone else's house, wherever you are, um, I want you to to think about this idea of a refuge. And the word refuge is something that, that's quite significant to this exercise, because uh, if, you've, if you think about a refuge, you might think about somewhere that's safe, a place of safety. Um, a refuge is somewhere to, to be protected, to, to possibly um, hide or to be, yeah, to, 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 be, to be safe from. And, but also somewhere to, to be that, that might help you feel better, that might help you feel safe or to help you feel uplifted. Um, and a refuge can be a quiet space. It could be, you know, we find refuges everywhere. But the refuge, the word refuge, I think, and the idea of a refuge is has got incredible potency right now in the world. If you and I think we can't we can't ignore the fact that um, you know humanitarian crises, political crises. Are happening all over the world sadly and the need for refuge is 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 more important than ever um but also the refuge the refuge for the physical refuge the physical place to be and to dwell and to to, to feel safe is can, might be something as as simple as a piece of plastic and um some pegs but it but a refuge is something much more also more connected to ourselves in maybe a more private way you might have Put the sheet over your head and read a book at night time as a child or you might have hidden under the bed to 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 play uh, hide and seek and so you've already had a refuge you've found places of refuge so those places of refuge might be very playful and very comforting as well um, whether it's under the stairs or behind the sofa um, i know i used to hide behind the sofa when something was scary on on television um, uh, which is kind of embarrassing to say that but that's true um, so refuge is something something that it, we perhaps all have. We we've we've all had a refuge, um, but importantly, in terms of well-being, 
I want you to think about the re refuge as somewhere that you feel comforted and and ensconced in. And and this this is intended as hopefully quite a playful activity. Um, but what I'd like you to do is to spend. We're going to say ten minutes, Tom. Are we for this? Okay. Yeah, we've got ten minutes. Ten minutes, right? I would like you all to build yourselves a refuge in ten minutes. And it doesn't matter what you use, how you use it, but it might be that you just transport yourself back to being a five-year-old again. I've got a four and a half-year-old son. And the moment a towel goes over a, a drying rack, he's, in, he's thrilled by it. He thinks it's amazing. Um, but I want, so if you've not built a refuge since you were five or six, now's the time to do it. You can use anything you like, but you can also challenge this idea of a refuge. It doesn't have to be a piece of a blanket over a chair or anything like this it might be something much more esoteric or left field but um think about a refuge and what this might be um and and how you might build it what i'd like you to do is to share an image or two images on padlet of your refuge that you've built you've got 10 minutes to do this but i'd like you to take a photograph of the outside of your refuge where it is in relation to your house or wherever you are and i'd like you to go inside it and take a photograph from the inside out. So share an image of what it's like inside and what it is outside, okay? Simple as that. And that's your job, all right? Over to you. So we, it's 32 minutes past 11. So at 42 minutes past 11, GMT, and hopefully you'll have some pictures to share on Padlet, all right? Good. Hey, okay. Thanks, Des. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to do that too. Excellent. Can we watch you do it? Would that be possible? Yeah, how am I going to do that? Should I just carry my MacBook with me? Yeah, yeah, if you can. That would be that would be great. Now, I'm slightly prepared for you to cut off all of a sudden. Yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> this um and also I thought it would be to keep it real, to keep it real. I didn't mean to say it like that, but to keep it real. Um I haven't I haven't got I'm not I'm going to be like you lot. I've not even prepared anything. I'm not I'm not going to cheat with anything. I've got blankets next to me. I'm just going to do it. Okay, so here we go. Um, I've got sort of some, it's like a challenge, isn't it? So. Welcome to the tour of Des's house. Yeah, 1970s sheet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So what I've, I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to go, I'm just going to go with my kind of first instance here. Move the balance bike out from the hallway. So I've got, yeah, that will do. So we've had a, a great question, which is what, what if you're not at your place right now? Uh, oh, that's okay. That's okay. If you're, if you're not at your place right now, um, use whatever you can find, borrow something. Ask very nicely if you could just put just you know, take hold of a couple of cardboard boxes. That makes it very interesting. It doesn't have to be in your home. I think the, the, that's a really important point. A refuge is nomadic. A refuge is something that isn't necessarily fixed to the home. It's about you. So uh, you know, in terms of well-being and your mind, you know, the mindfulness and your sense of uh, yeah, well-being. It's it's about you and your relationship to, to this refuge. So it doesn't have to be intrinsically anything to do with your your own real home it's about somewhere that you feel safe and something somewhere you could construct that helps you to feel protected okay so yeah right. um if you're in a thank shop you. if you're in a I, I think i think what what's your building des what will um um other people are, are getting their their designs together um if you are in a situation where you are able to to be resourceful, maybe maybe you're in a classroom, maybe you're at a family member's house, maybe you're you're in an environment where people feel uh, well, you you feel able to use the resources around you, then that's brilliant. If you're in a if you're in an environment like you're sitting on a park bench, <laughs> then you might want to be a little bit more careful about that. You might want to use the bench itself or you might not want to engage with this activity at the moment. And we absolutely understand that. Yes. Um, 
it's something that also you can do at another time. So maybe you're not in the right circumstances at the moment, but maybe in, in half an hour, an hour's time, you might be in a different location where you're able to engage with this type of thing. We would love to see it. And you might want to submit this work uh, as part of your submissions um, if you would like to receive the certificate. However, if you're in a position where you just want to watch for now and just want to enjoy it, then please feel free to do that as well. I'm quite excited to see what Des is going to produce. Well, that camera angle kind of it alludes to, you know, well, some sort of actions happening, but we can't quite see. But that, yeah. that's what <laughs> all shall be revealed. All shall be revealed soon. Right. I just need to build an extension now, too, because I'm. I think I'm going to change my angle. I'm just going to reshare the Padlet link as well. Um, that, that some people have been have been requesting. So I'll just pop that into the chat now. How much time have we got on the clock, Tom? So we've got, uh, so we've said 42, 11.42. Um, so therefore you've got, you've got a few minutes yet. There's, you've got about uh, five minutes or just under. Right. Okay, that's looking good. That's looking good. I mean, the, what I quite like about this is it's forcing you to, to work quickly. And yeah. it's got real, it's got real parallels to things like disaster recovery sites where, you know, where people are building shelters. It's not just yeah. about relaxing spaces and like fun dens. Actually, there's, there's something in, in the real world that, that, that this touches on as well. Yes, it does. I mean, I, I was very moved by um, the, the, the earthquake in Haiti and, um, and how people had to j just, I mean, extraordinary how people, the resilience of people, but how they had to, use whatever they could find to protect themselves from you know flooding and you know heavy rainfall and the weather and and it was just it's very moving and you're right you know does you know disaster zones are, are you know there are lots and lots of um lots of examples of of uh, uh how aid aid is is used and how or how aid manifests itself in sort of shelters sort of shelter structures um there are lots of kind of designs for kind of kits that are used to to create very, you know, family family dwellings, for example, or you know, that aren't just that can be instantly kind of transported and and, and installed. Um, and so, yes, there's a very 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 sort of humanitarian side to this. Um, but but also, um, I mean, I I had some images on. Um, we can share them later. But the, you know, when I show you the images of the the examples of 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 what people have made, our artists have made. The idea of a shelter or a refuge is has got real resonance in terms of architecture, um, but also um, sort of other other realms, I suppose, um, fashion as well, as well in in that, in that sense. Um, but the shelter is kind of somewhere somewhere else just to be, to dwell. To the refuge is somewhere to to sort of think. And so, like you know, you you could all build a shelter or build a refuge. To then undertake some more drawing of your hand in this in this refuge, so you'd, it could be something that you kind of populate with these artifacts. That you, so, in a sense, you could all of you could put these things together. You know, make make a shell, make a refuge that you collect and place your these objects that mean something to you in your refuge, and then undertake a drawing activity in there. So you could combine all three of these exercises into one into one activity or one place um, if you wanted to. Right. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I'll let you crack on with, with refining yours ever so slightly, Des. Right. Um, we've had um, a few people request about um, asking for comments on their work um, that they've put on Padlet. And yes, we'll look to do that at the end of the session. Um, anyone that would like us to give a bit of feedback on their work, what you've produced, then we'd, we'd be delighted to have a chat with you. So um, we'll look to do that um, at the, at, towards the end of the workshop. Right. If you do have any questions, then please do feel free to, to ask them over the chat and we'll look to answer those. I hope your dens are all coming together. This is something that I love about fine art as well, as, as a practice. Um, and th this does happen in other creative disciplines, but I think particularly in fine art is that it challenges, challenges us to go out of the norm, to go out of our comfort zone to do something a little bit different, to do something that's going to challenge us as individuals. And I think it's actually a really healthy practice. Um, it, it, it 
challenges social norms. It challenges our, our, um, our day-to-day activities. And doing things like um, building a den when you're, you're no longer a, a child, can be, it can seem like an awkward thing to do, but actually to, to embrace that sense of play, it can be a really empowering thing to do as well. And it can fire up your imagination in ways that you no longer feel able to do because you feel like you should be conforming to a certain way of making or a certain way of thinking. That, that you know it is in line with your sort of age. Hello, Des. I see you in your den. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. So I'm, I'm inside my den, my my refuge at the moment. I've just posted some images of of my refuge. Right. Um, okay. So I've just. Hey, we've got some fantastic refuges going on. <laughs> if if you do want to take photographs of someone in your refuge, um, please make sure that they're they're not facing the camera. Um, that would be much appreciated. Okay. Yeah, so I've got um my, I, mine was a very uh very rudimentary. Um I, I kind of used what was around but uh um I managed to use a a drying rack um, and a blanket, some cushions. Um, but I sort of think, well, if I was in a somewhere else, I, I would have obviously used some very different things. This, these are kind of go-to, very contingent things to, to use. But I was th even thinking like a cardboard box on the head would be a very interesting refuge because you're kind of you don't have to. Do you have to cover your body in a refuge? Could could the could the could the, the head be con surrounded by? By a box, you know, does it does it need to be your entire body? Could it just be your vision that's contained, or your sense of self from your head? I don't know. This is quite interesting. Would you like to stay in your refuge as we look at some of the Padlet responses? It's now we've hit the time, and we've hit the, the that five ten minute mark. Yeah. Um, do you want to see what what people do? Come on, let's let's do it. I'd love to you see. You really it. chilled out in your refuge, there, Des. I'm actually I'm actually feeling very relaxed. I'm I'm actually. It, it's, it, I, it instantly feels soothing, actually. <laughs> Excellent. It'd be really interesting to see how other people are, are feel, feel about their refuges as well. So maybe dropping yeah. in some <gasps> extra words on their posts. Oh, wow. Yeah, could, really that's a really good, good idea. Do, do you know, anything a little bit like those objects, if there are things that you, you know, you, words that come, into, come to mind, then do. In a den with a good book. Wow. <laughs> 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 These are terrific, everyone. And a window. Like the name of the den. Oh, naming your den. I think we talked about that before, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, what it could be. Drawing of what it's like in my refuge. Hey, that's super. So someone's done a drawing of their refuge. That's terrific. Well, well done, whoever did that with their cat with them as well. Um, mine is the rather un 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 unimaginative one with the sofa and the white pillows, but. Um, I like the uh, I like outside of my refuge with my bed with my cat. I think cats are um, a very good accompaniment to anyone's refuge, I'd say. And it's really interesting that somebody said my friends and I hung out here with with as children and they still go there. So, you know, that these so for some of you, it's not necess necessarily something you've jettisoned in adulthood, which is very reassuring. What is that? Is that kind of is that a roof of some building? Here. Yeah, this, my friends and I always hung out here as a child. This, this is my wow, refuge. Wow. Refuge might be something that's been found. It might not necessarily be something they've constructed. Yeah, yeah. That's a really good. Um, <laughs> <under the blanket laughs> of my cat, whoever that is, that's terrific. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness, that's great. That's really good. Wonderful. Let's have a little refresh and see what what other things have been posted. <laughs> <laughs> someone has got what's this always used to stay up way later than i should what is this this is good uh this game is one of my old favorites brilliant going in and i mean what what a brilliant feeling isn't it when you when you're playing on your game and it's two in the morning and you know you could be up early for school or college you just can't stop playing it and no one knows you're doing it it's terrific it's such a good feeling <laughs> <laughs> Listening to music took inspiration from the second task and included things that make me feel comforted. Well done, you. Whoever put Tigger or whatever that, whoever's done that uh, one at the top, too, that's that's terrific. The co a combination of the two. Um, try to block out the lights of the blanket. 
That's, yeah, so to make it glow. Um, yeah, I like that a lot. This is in this is a this is a beguiling one, which is looks like a looks like a kind of a oh yeah uh, <laughs> the entrance. There's a, <laughs> two, two bottles. Um, um, and I think actually that's really, um, I think there's something very interesting in the diary, the relationship between the diary and a refuge. Um, so whoever's put that one up, thank you for doing that because um, the refuge is somewhere to, yeah, to think, to write, to reflect, to, to feel, to, to, yeah, to think about oneself and, and other things. But I think the, the diary goes hand in hand. Writing, it's a place of safety, isn't it? The, the diary is somewhere, hopefully, it might be private, it might not be, but it's somewhere safe to include your thoughts, isn't it? A, dri the drive, a drive with my dog. <laughs> well, I'd, I'd like to know where you're driving to, whoever's driving with their dog. Um, Denden, who's Den no, Den? I can't really bring my den to life, so I built it. My refuge is the sea, so I tried to bring it to life. This is remarkable. Wow. This is a, a, a model of the sea with looks like flotsam and jetsam on the sea. The kind of shingle. Yeah, that's terrific. That's terrific. With with, with COVID masks as well as the waves. That's really really good. Whoever's done that, well done. This I is great. It. This is exactly what we do on courses. Yeah, like this is, this illustration, is interior yeah. design, architecture. Yeah. It's all about doing this type of improvisationary sometimes, but model yeah. making. To represent a landscape or exactly, a place. exactly. But but the model and the model can take you somewhere else. The model can be a way of thinking of other things because the model is a stand-in. It's not the it's not the thing itself. It's a stand-in for the thing. Well done. That's terrific. Really like that. And just and this just the, the other one that says just a, a closed door giving you a sense of refuge. Um, uh, in this the sec the relationship between security and the closed door is so critical and or the. Have the ability, the ability to shut yourself off, I think, is is very important. As well as sharing is important, but shutting yourself off is important as well. Yeah. What I what I love about the evolution of how people have responded to to the tasks is it's getting more and more diverse as we've gone through in terms of how people have responded. It's been really wonderful to see how you've all read into each of the tasks. Yes. Oh, oh wow. Umbrella. Very good. Good job, Robin. Wow. Yeah, yeah, an umbrella as well. Um, I mean, what a great. Was that, uh, so that's luggage and an umbrella. Yeah. Uh, good to see the inside of that. Robin, thank you for that. That's, that's I mean, an umbre I mean, umbrella. I mean, the umbrella is such an interesting structure because it opens and closes, obviously. And it has a. And, and the umbrella is a kind of the, the resonance of an umbrella and weather or protection is, is significant because the umbrella is a roof. It's a roof, effectively, isn't it? And that just imagine seeing that as an installation in different environments has very different meanings. Yes. There's there's something about it that could be really powerful if it were in an airport, if it were on the street, mm. if it were in a gallery, it would have slightly different meanings depending on where you located it, but all with the really? same objects. I mean, you, you know, we talked about Tracy Emin's bed, didn't we, yesterday? And uh, the way that if, if if any of you are familiar with with that piece of work it's it's a it's a very charred work it, you know in many ways it's just a bed but there's no such thing as just a bed because um if you think about how our lives are uh, relate to the bed is such a loaded symbol so um a place of safety a place of of anxiety a place of rehabilitation a place of love it's all it's so so i think yeah this this you're right this installation with a suitcase and an umbrella also has very very different connotations in fact all of the i mean most of these images actually have got tremendous power in lots of different contexts um it really does i'm, I'm sort of intrigued by this this um it's just a <laughs> it's just an image of a what looks like a drawing board or a kind of this like, one yeah, yeah i'm intrigued yeah. by that one whether that's a kind of uh whether the space behind it is the shelter the the refuge or uh, yeah. the ref refuge is the painting it's the actual act, act of painting that's really interesting but but I think you know I'm, I'd like to think all of you you know the, the connection to well being here is 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 as I said at the start a, a way to to connect with somewhere that's safe and somewhere that is protective and somewhere that is so it helps stabilize your thinking and to 
to dwell and to be to have quiet time or focus time or safe time um <laughs> apart from your little brother jumping at the thought of building a refuge <laughs> 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 might be a little le le less uh, less less quiet <laughs> good well that's super i top i think these are tremendous really are very 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 powerful um um, do you think it would be useful to share a couple of examples of the, the artists or the works that... Um, yes, that absolutely. You know, I'll just um, try to get those um, on screen now. Just be a moment. Wonderful. Here we go. <laughs> okay. So, and, and I think, you know, well, well-being, you know, the, the idea of using a, a, a refuge as a place of well-being made me think of this incredible... Um, it's an incredible uh, um, village that was built in, in America, in Utah, in, um, called Drop City, which was this, um, this, a group of artists and architects decided to kind of literally drop out of society and, and sort of eschew all the kind of trappings of modern life and um, build their own geodesic dwellings out of old recycled car bodies. So th th the point about this is that by dropping out they weren't you know the, the the implications of dropping out might suggest that they're they got nothing better to do or it's a derogatory term but actually dropping out here was incredibly significant and positive because they were able to live as a community they raised children they grew crops they looked after each other they taught each other they they were self-sufficient and and this has incredible resonance i think in um contemporary living and how we live our own lives and how we might think of not just ourselves. This is an example of communal living. And, and, and I would sort of ask you all in your refuges, not just to think about yourselves, but to spend time thinking about other people and everyone else and, and to spend time thinking about what's happening in the world right now and what's around us and how you might be able to do something to, through positive thinking, to, through um, you know, positive actions, to maybe make a change and to, to help the world around you, the, the, how we shape and how you shape the world. And, and artists and creatives can do that. Anyone can do that, but artists and creatives have, have, a, have, a, have a unique and, um, and a very uh, special role here to, to, to do that, to help and to facilitate and to make things, to make, to enhance the way we live. Um, and the next image is uh, the work of an artist called Mike Nelson, who's a British artist. And this work is called Taylor. And as you can see, it's a tent built and put on a raft, which on, in many ways is a, is a very clever uh, refuge because on the one hand, it can float. So if you think about a refuge as somewhere that can, can be moved and relocated away from trouble. And I think that again has enormous implications to today, not just in terms of say environmental disaster or environmental sea levels rising and relocating one's, one's life, um, or one's dwelling, but also the, the the mobility, the ability to be mobile, and and again the humanitarian ish you know crises that are happening around the world of uh, you know are, are, can be read into this work. But it, importantly, the word Taylor is described. If you've any of you have seen Planet of the Apes, which is a really cool seventies sci-fi film, the main character George Taylor uses a he has to he tries to escape on a raft. So um, there's a there are real connotations to this. But look at it again. It's just a, it's a tent which. You, know, you you see around and about around the world in in sort of transit camps, refugee camps, but also the the, the oil drum is a very you know, a very um, utilitarian and very um, use useful piece of piece of material that isn't just once its use is finished, uh, it can be used for other things. Okay, the next image, Tom, is hopefully a piece of work by Lucy Alter. If I got if I managed to save that. Right. Right. I'm just sorry, I'm just doing some random things on my screen. Uh, right. No, that's no. the end of our slideshow. That must have been the blank slide. Okay, everyone. Well, look, that, that's that's a couple of examples of of what how how people have used or maybe have worked with the idea of the refuge. Um, but right. you know, a, a refuge might be. But a refuge is also for some of you. Your refuge might be that that step on behind a curtain where you can read quietly, or um, a seat in your favourite cafe, or. Um, a field that you like to go into and lie down and look at the sky. These are all refuges. It doesn't have to be, you know, this is a fun thing to do, hopefully a, a lighthearted thing to build in your house, but a refuge could be somewhere, you know, somewhere you, somewhere out there, out, out in the world that you go to. 
Thank you, Des. Um, I'm just looking at the time. We've got five minutes in, until the end of the workshop. So I'm just going to start to to round things up now, if I may. Um, but just just before I do, are there any comments in the chat, Des, that, you, that you'd just like to pull out before I get my script out? Yeah, um, let me have a look. Yes, there was. Um, yeah, I mean, what, one of the things was um, uh, just someone Matilda has just said I'm in a position where I cannot show pictures but my refuge would be at the stables with horses and uh uh I can imagine that would be a very powerful I think there's lots of lots of refuges there not just the stable itself but I'd imagine riding a horse must be an incredible way to kind of take yourself away from everything else and just to focus on on the moment and that relationship with the horse and riding and I think that's a very interesting idea of a refuge um certainly is well, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to wrap, wrap things up now for now, but if you would, as I mentioned earlier, if you would like us to comment on your work, we'll, we'll hang about for a few more minutes and um, yeah, we'd, lo we'd love to kind of um, give you a bit of a review if, if that's what you would like as well. Um, so to do a uh, reference to your, your images on Padlet, if you would like us to, to talk about those shortly, yeah. but I'm going to wrap things up at this stage. So um, before we finish up today, I would like to signpost some resources um, to help you and your friends and family and others with well-being issues. Um, so please see our Mental Health First Aid England and NHS and World Vision links um, that Gavin's going to put into the chat shortly. Um, so these will give you some sort of tips and insights around these subjects about how to look after yourself, how to be mindful of yourself and others around you and people that have been affected in different environments as well. <clears throat> so. Um, if any of this content that we've discussed has, has affected you in any way or made you think, um, then, then please do have a look at that. And also do feel free to um, talk to a trusted adult about some of the content that we've been discussing if, it, if it's affected you. Um, I just wanted to remind you that we have a wide range of workshops across our summer school. And you'll be able to access these through our recordings of past sessions. Why not even join us for more live events next week? These cover a huge range of practices. Um, so the first one was expressive painting with Emily Powell. We've had workshops like uh, character design with Dan Kelby. And next year, we're going to have the art of questioning with Amy Wolsey. And um, so I'm really excited um, about that one. All of our workshops are designed to give you an insight into lots of different areas you could take your creativity and suggest uh, different jobs as well that exist around those areas. So if you haven't already, you can book your um, place on our website um, and we'll take uh, and we'll send you a link in the chat as well. Um, we are also offering you the opportunity to receive an official NUA certificate, which is a great way to talk about any UCAS or personal statement um, well, to talk about on any UCAS personal statement that you might be putting together. Uh, to get a hold of one of these certificates, you'll need to send uh, attend six of um, our 12 workshops, and we need to see outcomes or your work that you've produced from three of them. Please be aware that any work that you submit throughout the series may feature in future promotional material, uh, materials. Uh, please note that your work... Um, sorry, that your work may be submitted that you've used, uh, that you've created after events as well. Um, you can send your three outcomes to us um, by email at student.recruitment at nua.ac.uk. You can send them um, after each individual workshop or you can send them collectively. Um, either way is absolutely fine. These outcomes um, that you've made, um, oh, I've already said that bit. <laughs> We, we also really want uh, to see what you've been making throughout the series. So do tag us in your photos of, of your workshop outcomes on Instagram or at NUA Outreach or at Take Your Place HE. And we'll be sharing some of our favorite pieces of work throughout the series. So please get involved. And that's on uh, our hashtag at NUA Outreach and at Take Your Place underscore HE. Each week, we're also gonna be giving away a chili bottle. So, um, this is your chance to, to basically win a chili bottle through filling out our feedback form. So if you do have five minutes to be able to get to lend us and to give us your feedback on what's worked well and what we can do better, then we'd love to hear your thoughts. So please do um, give, give us your feedback. We'll be sending out a feedback form at the end of the week. 
Um, so just before we close, Des, thank you so much for your time, yeah. for running the workshop today, for, for getting yeah. us thinking. Um, it's been a really healthy process to get involved with. So thank you so much. And thank you everyone for joining us. We help, hope to see you again um, in future weeks. Well, for next week's final workshop series. I have been an absolute rookie and forgot to turn my camera on throughout that whole bit. Excellent. Um, uh, <laughs> never mind. Easily done, Tom. I, I just noticed um, Smarty just said, uh, don't fall asleep in your refuge, Desmond. I, do you know what? I think I'm going to stay here for a bit longer. It's been very <laughs> excellent. Um, so there, there was um, a request yeah, to some Tom. You, you, did you want? I mean, I know there's some reflective questions you had uh, on reflection at the end of this. Do you? Are we a bit timed out for those? You had some very interesting questions to raise. I, I was just wondering if we could um, just do a, a slight review. We've had some requests for um, reviewing oh. students' work, so I'll do that, and then um, and then I'll chuck out those questions if that's okay. Yeah. Um, but if you do have any further questions, please pop them into the chat and we will look to get as many of, the, of those answered as we can. But if you do need to, to hit the road at this stage, when we totally understand and thank you so much for joining us. So um, we've had a request, Des, um, if we could review um, a couple of images that are yes, on the Padlet of board. Of course, yeah. Let's and just kind yeah. of give, give it a sense of how they're working. So right. I'll just share my screen. Here we go. So it's, it's these two here um, that we've been requested to give kind of thoughts on, give feedback on. You mean the one that says comfort, creativity, identity? Yeah. And the other one called make? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the one, the one uh, to the left, sorry, um, not the ah, one to the right. Yeah, um, well, let's start, can we start with the comfort, creativity and identity? Yeah. One? I mean, wh whoever made this one, uh, what that did, that was quite striking because for me, it actually res resonated with with the tradition of still life painting a lot, um, not just with the skull, but it actually with that, that kind of trinket of the, the ship in the background and the yeah. brushes, it, it kind of made me think about, for me, it resonated with me about the, a, a, a certain kind of era of of um, the, of that tradition. And particularly in, in Norwich Castle, there's some amazing paintings of, called Nature Moor paintings where um, artifacts relating to travel, to creativity, to life, and, and to the accoutrements of living exist. And I felt this was actually quite a classical, it's almost like structured in a very classical way. And I think this would be a terrific painting or drawing. I, I, would, I would urge the person who's made this to sort of, this could be translated very interestingly into a, into a sort of contemporary still life painting. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's got that um, 18th to 19th century kind of painting vibe about it. I absolutely agree with that. And so uh, artists that are kind of native to, to this area would, would be like Constable. And, and it's got his, his kind of hallmarks in it with the ship. Also with that kind of horizon line that kind of cuts through it as well in the background. I really done. like that. Very nicely done. Um, and there's some terrific examples in the Castle Museum actually uh, to, to look at. But yeah, looks uh, looks very, very, yeah, very, um, yeah, very poised, very well constructed that one. Um, and then, and then the other one, I will always stay with me. So I've a really bad habit of letting my brushes dry with the paint, and I don't throw them away. I still haven't figured out why I still have them, but I will eventually, well, eventually, will figure it out. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And so, what? Do, do, do you mind enlarging that one, Tom? Because are, are they pebbles next to the brushes? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, firstly, I, th I think what's what's intriguing. I think mo mo a lot of these have got this element of time written into them because when I see stuff, you know, coming from the coast and living so near to the coast, I can't not be mindful of time and the, and the, the relationship between our existence and time and the, the very slow process of erosion and pebbles being worn. These things, you can't cheat that. That happens very slowly. Um, and, and something, they're quite contemplative, you know, wherever, wherever these stones, they might have come from the drive of the house, but it doesn't matter because the, the way the stones have been have been made or formed um, have been done through action like hydraulic action or wind or or, or you know rubbing against each other. So that there's a kind of there's a there's an action there which is very very contemplative as, as far as I'm concerned. And I, 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 I sorry, no, go on. I, I was going to say I find this really interesting because there's there's groupings and there's one group that's bound up together. There's one group that's kind of um, collective. And then one individual set out on its own. So I, I'm kind of reading into it in terms of those relationships yeah. and, and, 
and the sense of freedom or oppression. So it's quite an interesting composition. And I, I think that that's the thing about a lot of um, fine art practice is it's not just what you're showing, it's how you're positioning it and what you're showing it in, in relationship yes. to. Yes, which definitely. Which very much affects how we, we read into it. And I but think it, it, it's, right. not, it's not, you know, composition is, is often un underestimated or you know, undervalued actually, the power of composition. Um, and, and I can't, on a sort of conceptual level, I can't, I, you know, I'm very mindful of also this, the kind of quote about the statement about the, you know, not cleaning the brushes. And, um, and, and I suppose I've just, just, it takes me back to that, the brush I, I've got from the Slade and, and how I sort of think about the surfaces it brushed and the, the, the particles of other people's work that it came into contact with. And when I look at the brushes, I'm thinking about the about potential and the history of the, the works that they made. They, you know, your, your hand, your hand held the brush that authored a picture. And that's an incredibly powerful relationship. So the, the, the brush becomes a sort of conduit between your, your mind, your mind, your body, and your intent and the surface that you're working on. So the brush is, is you know, not such a powerful image because you know, Jasper Johns casting paintbrushes in a tin was a really incredible statement of the, the potency of the art, the artist or the relationship between the artist and the, and the work through the tools that they use. But I think this is a kind of quite poignant actually, because I don't know what those brushes painted. They might've painted a, uh, somebody who doesn't, is not alive anymore. It might've painted a, a significant location that was important to them or, or they still have the potential to paint something beyond this image. So I think that's really, really very interesting. I really enjoy that kind of statement. Um, thank you for, for requesting those as well, everyone. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to have one final look um, in the chat. And, and maybe do you want me to kind of leave, leave on those, those questions, Des? That, I think they're super. Yeah, they're really good questions, Tom. Yeah. Okay, so let, let's have a little look at, at those. And Des, if you keep half an eye on the chat while I do this. I will, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so something that um, we really value at Norwich University of the Arts is, is the ability to run a critique um, the chance to, a critique is a, a context, an environment or a setup where we look at one another's work and we, we question it, we try to understand it, we sometimes, um, sometimes pull it apart and, and really try to um, help refine each other as, as makers. And it, it's really important that we do this. Um, we, we really wanted to introduce the Padlet board for this series to have that ability to share one another's work collectively, to, to see from one another's perspectives. And this is really important because when we learn from others' perspectives, we have an enhanced IQ. When we're, we're learning from how our work impacts lots of different people, that gives us a great impression as to how we can refine it in a certain direction to make it more effective for that, um, that thing that we want it to achieve. Um, so it's a real pleasure to, to be able to, to see your work and also to be able to talk about it. And it's really important that, that we have a space to talk about one another's work. Mm. So that we, we came up with a series of questions um, and initially we wanted to ask, you know, which, which of the activities did you enjoy the most? Um, as this is a bit late, then you don't have to type this into chat. You might want to type it into chat. You don't have to. Um, we also wanted to ask, um, what did the activity tell you about yourself and the world around you? The, the great power of fine art in particular is that it's not just about the outcome. Often it's more about the process and what we can learn about ourselves and others through the process of making and that, that makes it particularly powerful. So that was uh, what did the activity tell you about yourself and the world around you? And then the, the final question um, that I, th I think is the, the most powerful one is uh, what will you take from this session to help you with your well-being and the well-being of others? And it might be that you, you have taken just li some little tokens from some nuggets of wisdom from, from this workshop. It might be that you, you might have a look at some of those links that we've, we've put out previously um, for the NHS or World Vision or Mental Health First Aid England websites to have a little look at those. Um, but this, this is really important that we think about this type of stuff and how it impacts the way we, we go about living our lives and how we interact with other people. It, it does make a big difference. Is there anything you wanted to add to that, Des? No, I think, I think these are these are great questions for them to for, for all of you to sort of carry with you and to keep to 
to, to sort of keep keep raising i think tom or it's you know these are not just from this activity but but constantly isn't it these are these are questions that we we you know we, we kind of set you i i would you know I would, I would be asking you these questions as students um but so hopefully you can continue to ask them great thank you well looking at the chat um i i think well we had some lovely comments thank you yes thank uh, you very much for those yeah love that hand drawing activity as well I think that's fantastic um guys thank you for your comments it's really lovely um but we're going to have to draw things to a close there we have gone um 10 minutes over des thank you for your time um it's that's always a pleasure, pleasure working no real pleasure. and um thank you everyone once again for, for getting involved um what a joy it's been thank you so much and yeah. um, so we're going to call it bring it to a close there um thank you for your lovely comments and we hope to see you again too take care of yourselves everyone all right Thank you. Bye-bye.